guys, my name's Simon and I'm here with a simple video about some important things for getting your wort from your brewery to your glass. Hopefully it will give you something to think about when you're making your own craft beer at home. Probably the most important thing to think about when doing this is sterilisation and hygiene. And for the first few years that I was brewing, I bottled. Um, and I can honestly say that I've never, never lost a batch due to this. So, your brewery pumps out your lovely wort. It doesn't matter whether you use a bucket fermenter or you use a demijohn. You just need to make sure that you've got it clean and that it's sterilised. Now, there are stacks and stacks of products out there to do the job. And either online or at your local brew shop and you just need to make sure that you follow the instructions carefully um, and, uh, and choose the one that you really like. I really like this no rinse sanitizer. Um, it's granular, you just weigh it out, mix it with the correct level of, of water um, put your stuff in, leave it for 10 minutes and then it's good to go, you don't need to do anything else, no rinsing off and uh, just make sure it's, it's thoroughly dried out. Um, you can prepare it beforehand and it'll last for about an hour and it remains active for about, about 5 hours um, after, after it's been applied and used. So I really like that. Um, for a while I had a bit of trouble getting hold of it, so um, from my local brew shop I picked up uh, another small powdered um, product, um, but with this you, it's a, it's a steriliser and you need to rinse after you've done it. After you've sterilised you must make sure you, you, you rinse it off, um, you know, it could be harmful otherwise. Try not to use that one because um, Obviously, it's, it's, it's a bit more hassle and you want your, your brew day to go as simple as possible. So for me, you know, a no rinse sanitizer, you can buy the liquid format, I like that, that's in, that's in granules and that, that's really good. Just have a look at that then. So you just get um, some lukewarm water and measure or weigh out the correct amount to go into the water. If you want to make a larger quantity, um, then just make that slightly more concentrated in here and then pour it into your fermenting bucket or a large container and then add the appropriate amount of water just, just, to, uh, just to make sure that you get the right level of sterilization and safety. So you can see you just Put your granules in and stir away. Make sure all the granules are, are dissolved. It takes a couple of minutes. I know some people use some other ones that you can buy online. Um, liquid liquid formats probably dissolve a little bit easier. I don't know what it is about this. I just really, really enjoy enjoy using this. I just feel um, feel really safe, secure with it, and and I've never had any problems. Never, never at all. So. So, so I'm quite happy to go with that. So once you've done that, obviously that can go um, into your bottles, pour it into your bottles. Make sure you'll pour that, pour that into your bottle. Pour enough in. Give them a really good shake. Give them a really good shake. Um, empty them out. Pour it into you, into your bucket. Make sure you immerse absolutely all, all your equipment, everything, everything's got to be done. After you've used your brewery, you know, I, I like to just sterilise them. I always feel it's, it's, it's belts and braces and you want to, you want to, you know, make sure that you sterilise everything. You know, from your hydrometer, which I've broken, dropping on the floor, um, your bottle caps, your your demijohns, your brushes, um, 
your your racking cane, absolutely everything. So you've sterilised everything. You're all good to go, and you're ready for your first first phase of fermentation. This is a bit where you pump your wort from your brewery and it goes into your chosen vessel. Um, could be a demijohn, could be a fermenting bucket, that's your choice. So at this point, if you want to find out um, what your beer is going to be in terms of the percentage of alcohol, you need to take your first reading and that will be your original gravity. So with a hydrometer or another tool, you can you can take take that reading. My hydrometer's broken. E easily done. I think any good brewer's got to at least break one, two, three. Uh, so you take your reading, and then you add your yeast, and you make sure that at this point that it's well well stirred, well mixed, and then you've got to seal your bucket, your container, your demijohn, up. Now, I know some people like to track their readings and see how, how the gravity is changing so that when it stops, you know that it's finished fermenting and you're ready to go to the next stage. Um, personally, for me, I follow the instructions of the yeast or the recipe and maybe just give it a day or so extra and and then and then then I'll I'll do it because I'm worried that if I'm tempering going in and out taking readings taking samples then I'm concerned that bacteria might get in and, and spoil it. So for me I I put my lid on and I'll use a bit of sterilizing fluid put that in there and leave that, it's good to go. When I was doing smaller batches using a demijohn or if you want to do a half batch use something like this you might need a blow off tube to start with and then maybe change that after a couple of days after the first you know aggressive aggressive um, start with the yeast um, and then leave it. Follow the recipe you know if it's a two, two, week, two weeks should be good enough then you're ready to go on to the next stage. You've put your wort in his bucket, in his demijohn, and it's in the right place with the right temperature, according to your recipe of yeast, and um, you left it for the appropriate time. It's ready to come out, and you're ready to enter the second stage now. So, you've got some choices to make, but you need to get your wort out of the bucket, out of the demijohn, and into the container of your choice. So, um, what do you use to get it out? Um, well, I like to use um, a racking cane. Um, there are various ones that you can get hold of that I will show you here. Um, you use um, a tube as well attached to the end of the racking cane. Um, there's this one here and you start to draw out and cause some suction to pull the wort out of the bucket at the container um, which I'll show you in a minute or you can use this one and you need to create your own suction yourself I like this option I think you will too so today we're going to look at bottling really good really nice I, I love bottling I really enjoyed it and I still still like a bottle um, could use a mini keg could use a, a corny keg with that system um, or a combination of, of, of all three um, I started out bottling first couple of years loved it really did um, as you start to brew more you probably need more bottles and it is time consuming um, and, and it, is, it is worth going on to something like this these have got a limited time use and if you buy the ones without the tap then you've got to fit one of these with a CO2 canister inside and you've got the tap on there but they're really really fiddly 
So, um, you know, you can't go wrong with bottles. Love them. Let's, let's have a look at that. So, to end up with some really nice clean water to go into your bottles, I like to uh, decamp for a couple of days before from one vessel into another or from one bucket into another bucket. Um, being really careful to avoid all the trub and yeast at the bottom. And, and I'll start with the cane from the top and slowly, slowly, slowly work down, trying to avoid disturbing the yeast and the trub that you've got at the bottom. So then, after one, maybe two days, okay, of putting it back sealed up, with your, with your airlock on again, you're ready with something like this to go straight into your bottles. So, again, you'll have a little bit of sediment, yeast at the bottom, but your wort should be much clearer and you've got less chance of it ending up in your bottles too. So at this point, you use your hydrometer again and you take your final gravity reading, do a simple calculation and work out what ABV you've got. Hopefully you're happy with what you've done. So if you're bottling or you're putting it into cans, then you need to prime your wort now with some sugar to make sure that you, you get your right level of carbonisation. Um, for me personally, I, I like to, to prime into, into, a, into a vessel and rather than putting small individual tablets or amounts of sugars in, into bottles or cans, I think if you do the whole amount, mix it up well, then you, you, you're going to get an, an evenly balanced um, accurate level. No, no nasty accidents happening. You hear, you hear of lots, lots of problems where people have put too much sugar uh, in, into a bottle, and you know they're, they're, these are bottle bombs. It's not something you want. You don't want to waste your beer, and you don't want any like splintered glass anywhere. So, um, priming. Follow the recipe, or use um, an online calculator. You know, there's stacks and stacks of, of websites now out there. Brewer's Friend, Beer Smith, they've all got these places um, uh, on their websites where you can look with advice that give you specific amounts of sugars that you might want to use. Um, hints and tips for the right levels. Just go with those, especially if you're starting out. If you've done something a few times and you want to adjust a recipe so you'd like a certain beer, with a bit more gas or a bit less gas, um, that, then that's great. But go with the recipe to start with and then, then see how you go. I think it's always better to be more cautious. Um, so put your sugars into, into the vessel, mix it, stir it well, and then you're ready to go on for your final level, bottling or into your mini kegs. So I'm going with a standard racking cane and um, I'm ready to create some suction. Um, we've sterilized the bottles, they've dried out, sterilized the caps. Um, we need to sort of like cover all bases. You need to create some suction. It doesn't happen on its own. So just sterilize your lips. Cheers guys. Okay, um, bit of gin, something, something like that. Um, Create some suction. Click, click on your clip. Carefully into your bottles. Try not to make it bubble too much. Don't want any oxygen in there. And we're watching carefully on the bottle. And we're watching the cane too. And just a small amount of space left just at the top. Small amount at the top there. Okay, pinch on your clip. Be careful, you don't want to lose any wart. Ah, losing some. Okay, don't do that. 
and carefully just move your wrecking cane down as you do your neck bottle. Stick a bottle cap on there. Okay, get ready. Do your next one. Work through them all. Fill a can up if you want to. Um, mini keg, and uh, and then and then you're just about ready to do the next bit. So there you go. You've got your bottles ready. Put your cap on. Use your capping machine. Steady as you go. Take it easy. That's it. Done. Jobs are good on. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Okay, two weeks later, fingers crossed, into the fridge after that time, chill it down, and hopefully you'll have something fantastic to drink. So, two weeks later, you've got a beer ready to drink. Just remember, keep everything clean, sanitise every step of the process then you can enjoy. Cheers.